Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about um, Simutrans Extended. Um, this is a different version of Simutrans than Simutrans Standard. This one has many more features and it's uh, more complicated. Um, but if you're here trying to find out how to play it, I'm sure you know about um, why it is better. And um, yeah, that's, um, that's why I like it because there's many more features and it's a lot of fun to play. Um, it gives a very realistic feel to the game. So, um, anyways, I'm going to be showing you how to connect these towns. Uh, I'm going to be showing you the very basics of making a railway in Simutrans Extended. Right now I have these towns, Friars Wetton, uh, Bracker Hill, and Pooterpool. Uh, it's a funny name, right? Um, I, don't, I didn't make it up. This is all based off of um, British names of towns. So I guess somewhere in Britain there's a town called Pooterpool. Um... <clears throat> So I've already laid my track. It's pretty similar to, the track laying is pretty similar to Simutrans standard, and it's the same basic thing as OpenTTD, just make your track from one town to the other. Um, and I'm not gonna go into a lot of the more complicated things or the more basic things. I assume that you already know some of the stuff about Simutrans and OpenTTD. Um, so, um, what I'm going to be doing is building a station and setting up the signals. So right here in Bracker Hill, I'm going to start by building a station. I'm going to use the brick platform with buildings. <clears throat> As you can see, there are three different or four different types of platforms, but um, this one and this one are the only ones that can hold people. These ones are just so the trains have a place to park like that. And I'm going to go back to my first city, build a station, and my last city, and build a station. Now, um, I'm going to show you how to set up the signaling. The signaling is different than... Oops. Don't mind that. Sorry. The signaling is a little different than standard. As you can see, we don't start off with signals. We do, however, have these signal boxes. And we're gonna be using the mechanical signal box. They first become available sometime around 1861. Sorry about that again, let me just delete this guy. It's my horse. Sorry about that, won't happen again. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So um, before 1861, you are able to build trains and signals. However, the signals, I think, are very complicated for beginners. I had a hard time with them for a while. Um, however, around 1861, the mechanical signals become available, and these are very much like the um, path signals in OpenTTD and the regular signals in Simutrans Standard. So I like to use these the most. Um, so I'm just going to put down a signal box. This one has a small radius of 4,000 meters, and it can support six signals. So as you can see, the signals become available. I only use this one, the semaphore stop signal, because um, it's just it's like the path signals. It's it's easy to use. It's simple. These other ones. Um, can do interesting things too. Actually have not quite mastered them because um, I really see no need to. I can still have a lot of fun with the regular stop signal. So you're gonna wanna put one right there. That way, when the train leaves Friars Wetton Railway Station, it is allowed by the signal to go at full speed down the track. If a train does not have a signal like this facing in its direction, the red is the direction it's going to be going, then it will travel at only 35 kilometers an hour, which is quite slow. But if you put a signal, then the train is allowed to go at its maximum speed. So over here, see, can't place a signal here because I don't have a signal box. I'm going to put the signal box right there. Signal going this way and signal going this way. And one-way signs to make it easier for the trains. And our last station over here. Signal going this way. And now I'm going to show you how to assemble a train. 
Now, the train depot is very expensive. It's $26,000. That is a good chunk of the money you have to start out with, so be sure you budget for having to build this um, steam depot. You're probably only going to want to build one, you know, for quite a while because it's so expensive. Now, you have the locomotives page. All these locomotives have different speeds and different um, capabilities, but what I'm looking for is the cheapest one to operate. The cost, the upfront cost is nothing compared to how much it's going to cost to maintain it. That's the one you should be looking for. Um, so this one is the cheapest. It's only $2.90 per kilometer. I'm going to buy it and go back here to the passenger carriages tab and I'm going to build a train for it. So I have a couple options, but I'm just going to go with this one. Um, it's simple. It holds 32 passengers. All I need is one or two cars because you're not going to have a lot of passengers at first. And then you're going to put a brake carriage at the end. Your train needs to be all green in order to run on the railway. So then you go back to schedule and click on add stop. One, two, three, four. So as you can see, the train is going to make a complete circuit. It's going to go Friar Wetton, Bucker Hill Railway, Pooter Pole, and then back to Brucker Hill, and then the orders loop. So after Brucker Hill, it goes back to Friars Wetton. Um, I believe this is the same way it works in Open TTD. So um, sorry if you already knew that. <laughs> so then I click Promote to Line. It becomes Line Three. Click Exit, and then um, I think it's ready to start. So let's watch it go. We have the fast forward button to watch it, um, watch everything happen quickly because actually it takes quite a while for everything to, um, from the train to make a, you know, complete loop. See, we got two passengers on board already, zero passengers on the way back. This is expected because I do not have very big towns and I do not have, um, good connections with the rest of the town. What I'm talking about is people are more likely to use the railway station if it's close to their house. So this one right here is likely to use the station because it's across the street, but the guys down here, they are probably not going to want to use the station because they actually have to walk uh, for 40 minutes. You can see it says um, 40 minutes right here. And so if you want to make your connections better and improve passenger numbers, you need to add, um, like over here you saw the horse that was annoying me earlier. You have the horses that can transport passengers to the station. Later in the game, of course, you have buses, which makes things a lot easier. And this improves your connectivity with the rest of the town, um, which is necessary to generate passenger numbers that will make your railway profitable. Yeah, I'm not going to be profitable with only seven people riding the train in either direction. But this video is just for tutorial purposes, so I'm not going to go into that. Anyways, I think I have covered everything. So um, please leave any comments if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them probably. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you play Simutrans Extended, which is, you know, the best version of OpenTTD and Simutrans. There's a lot of fun. It's very realistic. Um, all right. I think I've said enough, so have a good day. Bye.